Hello, today I have got the Ave Revo 15. Now again, I couldn't find any reviews of this thing online, so I decided to do it on my own. Now I had a fairly good response with my last review of the Vonix SPJ 1000. So I believe you guys are really interested in this little Aussie gems. They're made in Australia, designed here, and they're absolutely amazing. And the price very, very aggressively, given that the quality, they're absolute bargain. Now, Ave has got this 15 inch model, there's a 12 inch model and a 10 inch model. Now, so these are claimed to be tested for two days, each and every one of them for 40 hours straight to make sure they are performing up to their standard that's set with the Ave engineers. Now, the Revo, I believe, is the bottom tier series from the Ave active speakers. So on top of that, they've got the Ultra. There's a few review of the Ave Ultra speakers online. And there's a new one now that I believe is called the Ultra Max. They're all coming in the standard 10 inch, 12 inch and 15 inch models. So these ones, they're rated at 350 watts RMS, 1100 watts peak, and they are bi amped. Now be careful that Every time these things are advertised online, especially to DJ CD, I did get mine from DJ CD. They're all advertised at 1100 watts. They are not 1100 watts. They're 1100 watts peak, but 350 watts RMS. If you want to know the difference between peak RMS, amplifier, power, and whatnot, I'm not the best person to. Um, I'm not the best person to tell you all about it. It's more likely you're going to find much, much better information from somewhere else. I'm definitely not the expert in that field. Now, all of the models 10, 12, and 15 are powered by the same amplifier. So they are all 350 watts, 1100 watts peak, bi-amped. So that means there's one amplifier for the main driver and another amplifier for the top tweeter. Now, the... 10 inch model is at 120 dB, 12 inch is 121 dB, and the 15 is 122 dB. So they've just got the different drivers, different speaker cabinets, and the same amplifier. And they're all $50 in difference for all of them. I'll show you on the website in a little bit. But what you're paying for is a bit more loudness, a bit more lower and bottom and clarity that's pretty much it you're getting better speakers a bit bigger speakers to give you that bottom end and you're getting a bit bigger sound pressure level to give you that clarity on the top volume so here's the 10 inch model listed at 449 then you've got the 12 inch which is at 499 and the 15 inch the one i've got is 549 now if you look at the speakers, right, they look very, very similar because Electro Voice has a speaker that looks exactly the same. It is the ELX series. That's the ELX 212 inch. Now, these ones also has got DSP, but unlike the AVE, the DSP on the Electro Voice are built into the amplifier themselves, just in the back of the speaker unit. Um, you might be able to see it through the photo over there. So that is the that is the um, DSP section just on top of the speaker inputs itself. Now with the Ave, there is a DSP software that I couldn't find any videos or anything online either, and this involved me going back and forth with Ave for quite some time over their email, which their customer service is absolutely amazing, and they did help me out with the latest version of the software that you can use to edit the DSP presets on this Ave, and I tell you what, the DSP is what makes this speaker probably the best speaker on the market at the moment for around that $500 mark. The software itself is absolutely insane. Um, I'll go through the software in a separate video. Um, there is no instructions on the software either, so I'll do that. Now, Alto has also got a similar design speaker, which is the TS series, and these are also active speakers. 15 inch is exactly the same price, but what you need to keep in mind is that the Alto does not have a DSP in it. 
say it's 2000 watt, but I'm pretty sure it is the um, peak power 2000 watt, not the RMS. If we were to look at the RMS, um, 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 hmm, LF driver, LF driver size. I cannot see an RMS, but they are 134 dB, so these are rated as a much much louder sound pressure level than the um, <coughs> than the Aves. But then again, the DSP is just amazing. <laughs> Get them all with the DSP. Now, in terms of features. The front grille itself is metal, and to prevent all the vibration from the metal hitting the plastic and whatnot, they have got this little rubber feet, which kind of dampens the vibration on the speaker grille from the body itself. Now, the way it works is there are six screws on the side, and there's two little tabs the little feet they keep a pressure on the speaker grill itself so there's no vibration at all and they've got the rubber stoppers on top so that's your tweet up on the top there's a 15 inch driver we will do a sound test later and there are two ports on each side on each bottom corner now if we look on the side <coughs> There's a handle, and these are angled. So the same way as the Phonix SPJs, you can put them on the side straight or put them in an angle to be used as a fallback monitor. Now on the top, you've got another handle. There's a fly point mount. This can be used to hang the speakers in the ceiling and whatnot. I use them to put some lights up at the top. In terms of input, it's got well this by the way, these labels, they're all they're all from me. They didn't come with the speakers, these are just for me to label them. Now there's a mic input. I have not used that mic input. There's a input and through. Now, in order for the through to work, the speaker needs to be turned on. If the speaker is off and the signal is coming through, it will not pass, unfortunately. Now, there's your power and limiter LED. The little volume knob is, is notched, actually. I don't know if you can hear it. They're like little stopping notches that tells you where your where your levels are, and it's got a really nice feel to it. Really, really nice feel. There's no heat sinks, no fan whatsoever. That's the little selector that you are able to select your presets from. So preset one through three, sorry, one through three are editable. So you can edit them through the software. Now the preset from four through seven are not editable. Now when you get the speakers brand new from the factory, preset zero through three and four through seven are exact copies. So whatever you've got from four through seven is copied onto one through three, if that makes sense. And you're only able to edit or delete the process through zero to three. That's your USB cable to connect to the computer. Now this one has got a power con input and you can also send output through this one. So if you've got, for example, let's say you've got the connections on one side of the room and then you've got speakers on the other side and this one sits somewhere in the middle, you can run power to the speaker and power con out through to your sub and then through to your sub to the other speaker or through here to your other speaker straight away, then you wouldn't need to plug that other one into the plug, if that makes sense. There is a power switch. Now I've put these levels for my reference to let me know which preset is what and what I've edited to. So for example, let's say preset number zero is no sub, so my bass is a bit, bass is a bit boosted. One is kick enhanced, it's got a bit more punch to the kicks. 
2 is low cut at 37 hertz. That means I can use a sub with it. Gives it a bit nice boost. And number three is high boost. That gives me a bit more higher clarity. That makes the speakers a bit more louder. Now, the speakers out of the box came with a power con cable, a USB cable, and user manual. Now, it came with this power con cable, so you would need to go ahead and buy a power con cable separately. Now, I would be lying if this is the cable that came with the speaker. Unfortunately, the cable that came with the speaker is somewhere, I think, two meters long or so. So what I ended up doing is getting an extension cable, a black extension cable from Kmart for 10 bucks and just chop the other end off and put this power con on from the original cable so the speaker works just fine and the power is now on let's do a sound test and then we'll come back now here's a little sound test in order to get sound to the speaker i'm using my ipad running bitport to the mixer out of the mixer to the speaker via an XLR cable. The speaker only takes an XLR cable. This thing is loud, it's very, very loud. I'm not even trying to at all. sitting on the ground so the bass is a bit more pronounced than compared to say a speaker stand if you were to run on a speaker stand the bass would be a bit more clear but it will not be as loud as this but you will you can still feel the crowd shaking pretty much the bass is quite powerful on the speakers Here's a frequency sweep on the speaker. 100 hertz. Crackling is just from a mixer. I haven't cleaned it in a while. We're back again at the back of the speaker while the music is running. Now, something to keep in mind is that little preset selector. You have to have a little flathead screwdriver in order for that to work, and it's just there to make it harder for someone to get the preset knocked over to something else. Now, one thing you'll have to keep in mind is you could change the preset on the fly but when you do there's gonna be a bit delay so the computer pretty much goes down 
and then comes back up once it's loaded the new preset. The volume's gone down. Once it's loaded the preset, it comes back up again. Again, if I were to cut it down to 37 hertz, which was my preset, it's gone down, it's loading up the new preset, and it has come back up again. That's something to keep in mind, just in case you do need to change the sounds while in the middle of a gig or something, the sound will drop out and then will come back. Overall, I'm very, very, very impressed with this speaker unit on, on NSO. I couldn't find any reviews or anything online, so that's why I was a bit hesitant to bite the bullet and spend $550 on a speaker that I know nothing about. And I live quite far away from DJ City itself, so there was no chance for me to sound test the speakers. My local store called Swamp Industries, they do stock the speakers, but they had none in stock. Anyways, when I purchased this speaker, it was smack bang in the middle of the pandemic and there was no way for them to get any hands on any stock anytime soon so i ended up just buying the bullet and getting the speakers shipped from sydney and to see how it is and in the meantime i tried to get as much homework as possible on the dsp software and one but then i couldn't find any results on the dsp software either so somehow i did manage to find the user manual for the DSP software. It is now available on a website. You can go and have a look at it, but I will run through the DSP software in another video shortly, which will outline all the features of the DSP software and how it works and what the features are with your sound delays and whatnot. So if you're not familiar with the sound delays, say for example, you've got one speaker right at your DJ booth at the front of the house and then you've got another set of the speaker all the way in the back and there's about a hundred meter in distance now you're depending on your sound and your speaker placement the sound may seem out of phase your kicks will not line up you will have some sort of problem with your high end and the transients and whatnot so if you do get a speaker delay system going on it will make sure that the speaker at the front and the back fires at the same time so that way you don't get that little delay if you were to run the same sound from both ends if, it, if, if that makes sense because sound does take a bit time to travel it's that little delay you get when you see a lightning bolt and then when you actually hear the thunder that is pretty much the difference of the distance sound needs to travel so you want to make sure the people in the middle of the dance floor can hear both speakers at the same time and hearing the same thing and not delayed say a couple of milliseconds and the AVE software makes it really really easier for you and you don't have to make any of the calculation yourself so how many milliseconds of delay and whatnot all you have to do is put your distance and the software does all the calculation itself and puts it into the speaker to say hey you're this many meters this many feet away from the front you're gonna have to do this job to match what's happening at the front of the house and pretty much the speaker computer itself the dsp computer and your computer software does all the calculations for you it's absolutely phenomenal so stay tuned and i'll show you this software in another video